to your Pakistan Spotlight. I'm Nashma Sakhaya. Today we're in conversation with Kevin Coim, a serial entrepreneur and CEO of Tech Ranch. He's visiting Pakistan as part of a delegation from Austin, Texas. Welcome, Kevin. So, Kevin, you've been in Pakistan for four to five days now. You've spent time with the entrepreneurs, with their mentors. What are your major key takeaways? Well, so I get to work with entrepreneurs around the world. In the last 10 weeks, I've been in four other countries on top of also the United States. So I've quite literally worked with thousands of entrepreneurs. One of the things I love about the entrepreneurs that we see that I've, that I've interacted with in Pakistan is the passion and the innovativeness of the ideas. Specifically, what I started TechCrunch for was to take on issues in the world, social impact issues, mm -hmm. and we were recognized as top three social imp impact incubators in the United States. And so uh, the thing I think has been most exciting about the entrepreneurs I've, I've got to interact with here in Lahore is that they're truly committed to building a, a brighter future and creating interaction and some really innovative business models for doing so. Right. So what are the areas that you think we need to focus on right now? You know, the main thing is just recognizing that this, this, this realm of social impact is a real thing. Now, I come from being a technology back. I have a technology background. I've built, for the last 22 years, I've built um, nothing but technology startups. Mm -hmm. And a, a mistake that actually happens in the United States, as well as all around the world, is not unique to Pakistan, mm -hmm. is that people say, well, there's technology ventures, and then there's social impact issues. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people make the mistake that they don't see that there's a possibility of bringing them together. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, that many times because a lot of the Hollywood look at technology startups is you know, a certain style, this is being missed. I see it missed in Austin at times as well. And so I would say to the people of Pakistan, uh, the entrepreneurs of Pakistan is, it's a viable alternative. You know, historically, certain social issues were looked at only as charitable issues, mm -hmm. but really to take them on and solve them at scale, and I mean at scale being in the world, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to build businesses to do so. And so just recognizing that it's a viable alternative to building just a pure technology business. All right, so going off of that, you've mentioned several of your interviews that global outreach is very important. How do we get international funding for startups? Well, so I, I have a different approach maybe than a lot of the things that you've heard. And sometimes when I say what I'm about to say, people think that I'm anti-funding. Okay. And I'm not. I'm not anti-funding. I just think that the entrepreneur should look for investment at the right stage in his or her journey. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little bit of personal story because this will frame in why I think the way I do. My first dollars earned from my first startup um, 22 years ago were pesos in Mexico. You know, and people would say, well, you know, why'd you go to Mexico? Well, so I was a 24-year-old entrepreneur at the time. I had a very advanced database technology. And I couldn't find anyone in the state of Texas who would give me the time of day. I was either perceived as being too young or the technology was too advanced. And okay. so, you know, over and over and over, um, I was getting block after block after block. Well, my first customer ended up being in Guadalajara, Mexico, you know, one country away. Um, and the thing that was powerful about that was I got my first quarter million dollar customer from some other part of the world. Yeah. Um, part of what I would actually say is what that taught me is a lot of the customers in a global sense mm -hmm. are not necessarily in the building next door to you. Okay. And so a lot of times what the individual should look for is not necessarily the funding, but the early adopter customer. Like there's a difference between early majority customers, people that will go with you early versus the ones that will actually work with you at the very beginning. And you just have to look. Like in my case, the early adopter was a bank in Mexico and I happened to get connected to that bank and that was the whole thing that opened up. Those type of opportunities are available in an emerging market mm -hmm. like Pakistan. Yeah. There's enough business here that it's just a matter of looking the right way even before you work on getting investor funding. Now that being said, once you have that ball rolling, mm -hmm. there are investors in the United States and the other countries that I've just come from that are very interested, especially in the frame of social impact. Mm -hmm. You just have to have it framed in right and, and have the story put together in the right way. And you have educated over 5,500 entrepreneurs and have launched 570, more than 570 ventures. What has been your key strategy to launch businesses successfully? 
I mean, has it, there like, been a common factor? I, th I think that the number one thing that I bring to the table, that I personally bring to the table, and that Tech Ranch is hopefully bringing to the world mm -hmm. through our work, is this idea of a philosophical model from the standpoint of, of just a, a model of saying to entrepreneurs, yes, let's take a risk. Let's do it for something that's really honorable, that is mm -hmm. taking on a social issue and, a social, and building a social impact business. Mm -hmm. And then from there, creating something that goes to um, goes around the world. Like right now, uh, just recently, I just got a report in the last 24 hours from one of our entrepreneurs who's based in Austin that was doing some work in Guatemala that was working with a startup that comes out of Sweden. Um, you know, the, this whole idea is recognizing in the age of the internet, the collaborations and what's possible change, and we shouldn't limit ourselves to the history. I've always been an innovator, I've always been a pioneer that's focused on impact on the world, I mean, throughout my, my whole career. Mm -hmm. The main thing is just recognizing that if you look to the future, you should be building the future, not looking to the past for the ideas about how you build the future. Um, I think it's because I actually got to be exposed to that type of thinking early, early in my career. Mm -hmm. I worked at a Steve Jobs company called Next. Wow. And because of that, I think I never got stuck in historical thinking. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is to look to the future and recognize that we can build a future. Right. So in terms of formal education in the field, do you think there's specific educational skills that translate into successful ventures? You know, a lot of it is uh, formal and informal, I think, are valuable. We actually have a different approach at TechRanch in that we focus on a, a, a set of practices okay. that anyone from mm -hmm any background could actually do and end up becoming a successful entrepreneur. Okay. Um, you know, myself, I, you know, I had an electrical engineering degree, but in the, in the 5,500 entrepreneurs that you're talking about, yeah. there have been people that were from the poorest of the poor that did not have education that have actually had something successful happen. In the north of Chile, as an example, there's a guy that started teaching uh, children how to surf that were coming from the favelas of, of the north of Chile in this one region called Antofagasta. It was more of the attitude paired with the right group of people around him that created that possible. And so, yeah, formal education is valuable, but it never should limit the idea of who can access being an entrepreneur to change the world. Right. So in terms of co-working spaces like accelerators and incubators, do they always contribute successfully to growing ventures? I think that they can. Um, part of my concern and part of what, why Tech Ranch went from just having our own facility to working with facilities around the world was recognizing that a lot of times, you know, in, the, in computers we talk about you have the hardware, then you have the operating system, and then you have the killer app. Yeah. And so your co-working place which is just a building, mm -hmm. might not have its killer app. What I think the killer app is, a set of programs that really help drive the conversation. Mm -hmm. And not just for the individual entrepreneur's education, but back and forth among the entrepreneurs. Like one of the most successful things that we've done at the Tech Ranch is build collaborative communities okay. around the entrepreneur so that there's this social network that can actually help capture, uh, catch, not capture, but catch the entrepreneur, if there's some type of problem that he or she has through the process. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of co-working places in the world aren't thinking that way. Okay. And so the limitation is they might think about just having the space versus having something that really helps the entrepreneur develop themselves as they're developing their business. You know, coffee and space is great as a start, but it's not enough. You know, there needs to be a set of interactions. And I think that the interaction should be not only in the space, and, but also, as I've mentioned, you know, it should be connected around the world as well. It shouldn't be limited just to the one facility. And I think that's a mistake that some people are making, that, that they could actually connect and create much more interaction around the world. Right. And one advice that you'd give to Pakistani startups? Um, the great thing about what's happening here is there's a hunger. And with that hunger, lots of things can change. And the main thing is, to allow each other. I mean, I say a lot of times to entrepreneurs, don't just connect with your old friends, but find a collection of friends around you that are other entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and, and allow that hunger to be talked about, because among the entrepreneurs, 
Um, so I would say it, it's great to feel that hunger here. I'm excited about that in Pakistan. And then the thing to look beyond that is to recognize you need to put around yourself a set of entrepreneurs so that that, can, that fire can be fueled. Yeah. Because, I mean, even my own case, 10 years of successful startup history, right? Yeah. Um, and my mother, for 10 years of my, my startup history, still was saying, shouldn't you go get a job? We have to build, uh, you know, groups of people that can help each other through that whole process. It was really difficult. I was lucky that I actually stumbled into a group of guys that uh, helped me, men and women that is, that helped me build out my startup and also was my collective support team as well. First is just staying with you know, other friends historically and nothing against them. I still have a lot of friends that are just yeah. employees. That's okay, but um, let's take that hunger that's happening here for creating successful businesses and take it to the next level. And it's, it's cool to see, and I'm looking forward to doing much more with, uh, with Plan 9 and other incubators and other entrepreneurs here in Lahore, so that can we, we can do that together. I think that's great advice for our young entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for your time, Kevin. It's Thank my you. honor to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a very informative session with Kevin, and hopefully our young entrepreneurs can benefit from it. Thank you very much.